don't think this is supposed to happen. <laughs> I'm trying to roll it down my window. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to be doing some work on my 95 Forerunner and my dash cam decides to go off. Um, it's not really going to be a major repair. It doesn't have to do anything with the engine. It actually has to do with something with my rear wiper. Um, the wiper works fine. It does wipe my rear window okay. Here's my only problem. Turn it on. It's on intermittent right now. Okay, you can see the wiper's doing its job, but it suddenly just once it goes back up. Uh, okay. Yeah, it goes up like that. It's unintermittent. It should not, it's not supposed to look like that. And there it goes again. Not, it's supposed to stay like that if it's unintermittent. It should stay like that. There it goes off again. It should stay like that. I'm gonna turn it off. And then it goes off on its own, even though it's off. And I still can't roll down my window. You can hear it click. You can even see the voltmeter moving a little bit. But I can't roll down my window. I also forgot to mention that sometimes when I put my key on, because if if I turn the key, it will roll this window down or up. But once I do try to turn the key to roll down the window, the wiper goes off on its own. Okay. Now normally, the wiper should be in this position at least somewhere up there. Okay. Once you turn on intermittent, the wiper turns on wipes the rear window and it stays like that it should stay like that once the wiper is on intermittent and then it will wipe again and it will stay in this position same thing goes on when you turn it on if it's if it's not intermittent and you're just turning it for full time the wiper should stop right here before it makes another cycle going this way so the wiper is essentially going this way back and stopping where that wiper is currently on right now no matter if it's an intermittent or full time on it should stay that should be its resting position once the wiper is on once you turn it off it just go it should go back up but in this case it's not happening so what i'm going to do is I'm going to bypass the circuit and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. I do also want to apologize for the long introduction, but I just want to go ahead and show you how to do this. So crawl inside the forerunner and fold your, fold your back seat so you can gain access here because like I said, you can't roll down your rear window at the moment. So basically, Take this trim off all you need to do is just use a a flathead screwdriver or a plastic pry bar if you have it and just uh just take it off just be careful with it because it might break because this car is kind of old and it's things do get brittle as as a car ages so what you need to do is there are these connectors over here that you see i don't know where this leads to i think that leads to the tweeters because my card specifically this one doesn't have tweeters so uh I, there's some connectors over here and here's your wiper motor all you need to do is find this connector right here and it's located right next to the wiper motor check this one off okay and then you'll see six prongs here well actually five that are wired you'll see uh the blue and the green wire over here those are for your window controls you need to jump the green and the blue wires using a jumper cable or some sort of wire that you have access to. Now I don't have a actual jumper wire that will just clamp onto that. 
So I'm just going to do the next best thing and do that. Uh, I know that's not a professional job to do, but this is my car. And um, uh, if I was doing this, to, if this car was a customer's car, I will not be doing that part. But uh, I'm going to just essentially, oops, sorry for putting my hand on the, over the camera, just jump this wire with the blue and the green wire, which is basically these two prongs over here. I'm gonna do it off camera because I need two hands to do this. So I'll see you guys in a few okay. seconds. Okay, so once you're done with that, it should look something like that. So those are the jumper wire that's connected to the blue and the green wire, which is basically those two prongs over there. So what your next, your next step is, Your next step is to grab your key, go to the front to your forerunner, and I know I should just went out of the car and do this, but all you need to do, connect it, put your key in the ignition, turn it on, don't start the car, just turn it on. And then just this down and watch what happens. And it can roll up. And that's all done by just bypassing the circuit by using a jumper cable. Now, just keep in mind, this thing will not work. But in my, it personally for me, I don't think I really need it because I mean, I can, even if it's raining, I can still see who's behind me. So, and I mean, yeah, this thing gets fogged up, especially with cold weather. Because over here in the San Francisco Bay Area, it does get really cold during the winter time. But I do at least have some window heaters over here, so that's not going to be a big deal. But this will not work. That will not work once you do this bypass method. So, um... I've almost forgot to, uh, I don't want to be stupid about this, but uh, obviously put this thing back up there. So uh, be careful to uh, clamp it in because like I said, those things could be brittle and you could break something. But uh, just be careful on reinstalling the trim and then you should be done. So anyways, guys, that's how you bypass the circuit to have your windows roll down. And uh, yeah, normally this is not a professional way to do it, but if this is just your personal car, this should be a big deal. It's it's really not really a big deal. So if, if and plus, what's really important is if is this thing, this whole window assembly rolls down because that's what the Forerunner is known for. One of the most popular traits that the Forerunner has. So, anyways, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.